Okay, so today I'm going to be bringing to you helium mining uh, resources and websites. So there are a lot of questions on helium that can be solved by the blockchain uh, proof of coverage, right? So there's people asking, you know, where... Um, there's people asking, where can I get miners? Where can I mine the most helium? Is it the best to put on my roof? Um, all of that is there's tools and guides that you can have online. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share with you those resources. So today I'm going to be sharing the resources on where to find the optimal, um, where to find the optimal placement of your helium miner in your neighborhood. I'm going to be showing you a way to track how much helium miners are in your neighborhood. I'm also going to be showing a way to track your earnings using Hotspotty. So if you have multiple miners in multiple locations, you can just use Hotspotty. And then the other thing I'm going to be talking about is HIP17, which is an adjustment that they made for miners that makes all of the earnings calculated in hexagonal, uh, little hexagonal radiuses on the map. So that's what I'm going to be going over today. So let's get started. So hotspots. We have 24,900 hotspots in the areas today. So we're up from 18,000 when I started. And the price has gone through the roof. Price is around $12. So I'm just going to go through um, the guide. So I wrote a guide about helium mostly for myself, but it ended up being like a business manual. So if you're interested in the business manual, just comment below and I'll send it to you. And all I do is I just go over the intro, uh, what proof of coverage is, how the rewards work, challenger rewards, proof of coverage rewards, witnessing, um, where to find the hotspots, a list of suppliers. I have all of that. Antennas, what frequency range, what you want to do to configure the antennas for max. I even have some comparables of different places, uh, the developers, and then my resources. So today we're going over the resources page. The reason is um, you need to know this information. You need to be tracking it just so you know where your business is at, right? So the hotspot tracking site is called sitebot.com. So when you go on sitebot.com, it's going to give you four options. It's going to give you helium and four other options. So I already clicked on helium on sitebot.com. So what's it, what, you're, what it's going to bring to you is a summary page of the network or a summary page of the blockchain. So right now there's 24,000, around 24,900 machines, 6,500 owners in 66 countries, 325 states, 3,800 cities. So then it shows you the newest hotspots that came up. So one thing I noticed, China is online now. Um, Shangxi, uh, Shangxi, Shang, Guangdong, Fujian, Shang, Hyobi. So there's a lot of places online right now and they're going to, uh, it's going to be huge. Top seven day rewards. So someone in Long Beach, California earned 646 helium in seven days that's ridiculous let me um do i have a calculator yeah let me calculate that so right now it's around 1250 per coin so 676 times 1250 so you're looking at 70 70 thousand dollars Okay, seventy thousand dollars in seven days. So this person is killing it. Um, Texas, five hundred and forty-six. Huntington Beach, five thirty-one. So what that could be is it could be one person using uh, the same wallet for multiple miners, and that's why it's six hundred and seventy-six in in seven days. But if not, I mean that's amazing, seventy thousand dollars in a week. So he could actually start his own node. So uh, what you want to do, you want to go to summary. I believe it's summary. Yeah. No. You want to go to hotspot summary. Yeah. So you're going to go to hotspot summary and you're going to find your city.
seven day rewards, hotspots, owners, countries. So then you click countries. Canada, I'm going to do Canada because uh, that's where I am. So Canada has a thousand hotspots out of 24,000. So we'll go there. So then I'm going to go to states, which is actually provinces. Nova Scotia has eight in three cities yesterday, seven in earnings. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Ontario. 449 hotspots in Ontario. So then you have Toronto, Richmond Hill. So then I'm going to click on cities actually. So there's 46 cities in Ontario that have hotspots. And I'll look at Sneaker Surgeon. You said you're from North Toronto, eh? Okay, we'll click Toronto. So there's 214 hotspots in Toronto. And there we go. So now it's going to give you a list of all the people in Toronto that have a hotspot, who's making money, who's not, and the rewards, right? So you have one here made seven, three, one, zero, 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 two, three, six, ten. So you can just go through that list and check out those areas. And you can upload this into a spreadsheet. You could average it out. But it's giving you uh, meaningful data that you can go by. So one place that is very popular for people to search right now is in Alberta. Um, so in Alberta, there's a town called Sherwood Park. So Sherwood Park is in the east side of Edmonton. So yeah, Sherwood Park's in the east side of Edmonton. There's 20 hotspots. It's a really... Uh, it's a nice area now. It used to be a military area about 10, 15 years ago, but it's a really nice area now in, in uh, Edmonton. And they have 20 hotspots. Yesterday alone, they did 317 coins. Which is, yeah, $3,900 yesterday, divided between 20 people. So, yeah, you click on Sherwood. 26,000 coins in, in 90 days. Like, that's crazy. So you click on Sherwood Park, and then you can go see what they did in the last 24 hours. So the average person in Sherwood Park, like one person got 56 coins. Um, the average person in Sherwood Park looks like they're getting between 2 and 5, between 2 and 10 coins per day. Per month, they're getting between, you know, 200 and 1,000 coins per month. So they've built a strong network where they're all pinging off of each other and they're really well spaced and that's that's what's going on in Edmonton so that's a good site so sitebot.com is the number one resource that I would go to for uh, text data so the next place I would go to is explorer.helium.com I've gone over that very um, very many times which it just shows you the map and then you're gonna zoom into the map into your city then we have what's called the uh, hotspot tax calculator. So for people concerned about their taxes, they can go in there. Fairspot.host. So they can go in there and they can type in their wallet address and then it will bring up the hotspot taxes. So if we go back to Sherwood Park, for example, and we're going to pull a hotspot in Sherwood Park. Or actually, no, anywhere. So Great Britain. Five states. England. Uh, Northern Ireland. So I'm just going to pull someone in Northern Ireland and see Cookstown. Oh, he has no earnings. Sitebot. S-I-T-E-B-O-T. Dot com. So Belfast looks like, okay, there's some in Belfast. All right, so Active Pistachio Elk. And you have to get the wallet address. So I'm going to take the wallet address of Active Pistachio Elk. I'm going to put it on fairspot.host. And then it's going to break down 
the taxes. So this person has made 2,500 transactions, 1,000 HNT, which is $3,300 in income. In payments, they've received six payments of 24,000 HNT, which is $11,000. And then they sent $44,000 of payments and they've burned $8. So what that person can do, um, it looks like they started in 2019. So 2019, zero, nope. So 2020, they did a crazy amount of money and 2021, they've done $3,000 so far. So that person can then just download the spreadsheet they don't have to do any calculations for themselves, right? So they can just download the spreadsheet, put it in Excel, and they can report that on their income taxes. And that makes it a lot easier. So fairspot.host is a really good spot to do taxes. So the next resource I'm going to share is next resource I'm going to share is helium.place. So helium.place is a way that you can look at your location in comparison to other locations and see if you're going to reach them. So someone who's trying to decide whether they're going to look on uh, an outdoor hotspot versus an indoor hotspot, it's all depending on you know the location of their place. But you can go on helium.place and you can just type in a location and see what the coverage is going to be. So let's say main street Danforth go station in Toronto 213 Main Street let's see if that works sometimes this site doesn't work very well Helium.place doesn't seem to be working that well, but there are other sites. The HIP 17 density map. Helium.place, Helium.plus. So Helium.plus is a so yeah helium.place you got to try it out it doesn't work that well right now but helium.plus you can go on the hotspot earnings calculator and then you can just estimate your earnings so it's going to ask you three questions uh, how many hotspots are around you a few um, a, a lot or a little and then it will tell you what your estimated calculations are based on what the blockchain is currently paying out uh, simple earnings calculator data credits calculator the helium price so this is a nice little uh, website that someone put up. So that's another resource. So then we're going to go to the line of sight calculator. So the line of sight calculator is similar to helium.place. And it's going to take your location and then the location of the hotspot that you are trying to connect to. And then you're going to, it's going to draw a line using the elevation of the earth. And it will make sure that um, it can it'll make sure to calculate that if you're going to see that other person with line of sight or not and if you're going to connect to them or not sometimes you don't need line of sight because i'm you know i'm connecting to people that it's going through buildings and stuff but it's a good way to estimate so point one i'm just going to move these over to ontario Go down to Toronto. And zoom in. Jeez. All right, so you got to zoom in. Okay, Vaughn. So for Vaughn, Ontario, I'm going to put 0.1 at the east, or I'm going to put 0.1 at 
Scarborough. Point two in Pickering. And C. So the distance between Scarborough and Pickering is nine kilometers. And it shows that on this page, the elevation is actually the line of sight's not going to work if the antennas are one meter off the ground because there are some elevation issues uh, between the two. So that could cause some interference. It doesn't mean that it's impossible, but what you're going to do is when you're going on, this is uh, the site's called SCADA scatacore.com so, so scatacore rf line of sight calculator so if you just type in line of sight calculator or rf line of sight calculator there's tons of them online and then what you're going to do you're going to pick point a on the map so point a on the map is toronto zoo and then point b on the map is going to be the 401 express in pickering so one meter away, it's saying that there's a hill in the way. So then you can adjust the height. So say you're on the, like I have three floors in my house. So on the third floor, I might be 25 meters up. So 25 meters up, and then the second place might be 15 meters up. And it's 6.8 kilometers away. So now it's clearing most of the hills, but there is one huge hill that it can't clear. So it might work, might not work. So the website again is scatacore.com slash tools. So I'll spell it out. S-C-A-D-A -A core, C-O-R-E dot com. And it's the RF line of sight calculator. So that is a really good one to just uh, go through your neighborhood and pick houses in your neighborhood. So I'm going to go a little bit closer and I'm going to go from Glen Cove and Pickering to River to Pickering Village. So that's five kilometers. And if one was 25 meters high and the other was 10 meters high, perfect line of sight. So that should be able to connect. Those two helium hotspots should be able to connect um, 5.29 uh, kilometers away. So you can do that, and then what you're going to do is if your home is not optimally uh, connected, you're going to try and figure out, like, can you get a miner on the roof? Uh, can you get a miner outside on, in a tree? I've seen people put them on a roof. I've seen people put them in a tree. The main thing you do not want to do is the cord that goes from the antenna to the box. You want that cord to be short as possible. I'll confirm that with some signals people I know, but you want the cord from the box, the helium box to the antenna to be as short as possible because it um, it degrades the signal strength of that miner. So then what you want to do is you want to have an Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi in that backyard running to the miner and then a really short cable to the antenna. And then you can put the antenna in a tree, you can put the antenna on a pole, you can put the antenna on the roof, the side of your house, what's ever good. And then it should be able to increase your range if uh, your line of sight is increased by making the antenna higher. And you can also get a more powerful antenna. So that's a good site, uh, scatacore.com, and it's RF line of sight calculator. But also helium.place does the same thing. So then the HIP-17. So HIP-17, HIP-17 is a change to the helium mining calculation rewards that they were finding it was inefficient. So what happens is every time there's an inefficiency, they'll try to fix it and they'll vote on it. So people in the network will vote on the issue and then make changes to the helium earnings. So what they decided was we're going to calculate the rewards in small um, octagons. And basically there's X amount of rewards per octagon. So on hip17.helium.wtf, you can see uh, your area and it can show the ratings now based on HIP-17. So I'm looking at San Francisco downtown, the Chinatown area of San Francisco and the Marina District, Illinois Street, 3rd Street, uh, and Presidio Terrace, close to the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. And what it's showing is some of the people in the area are all red. And what it means is there's just too many miners in the area. Then some people are yellow and orange, and then some people are green. So 
in my opinion, um, I haven't tested it out, but the people in green who don't have very many miners around them because they're in a small area, they should earn more than the people who are all on top of each other. It looks like an apartment building on top of each other, right? So you can go click on the person's name, like Glorious Ceramic Troll, and we'll go to explore.helium.com. So I'll just test this up, this theory out. So Glorious Ceramic Troll should be making less than Darren Flax and Robin. And that's because they have to share with so many people. So glorious. So glorious ceramic troll in 24 hours has done nine HNT. Now we'll go to the green area, skinny Laurel Kookaburra, daring flax and robin. Daring. Daring Flax and Robin. Not popping up. The Helium sites have been going slow lately because there's so many people on them. They're going to have to upgrade their servers. They need to be on... <laughs> Maybe Amazon Web Server or something. I don't know. Daring, Flax, and Robin. So the other person was making nine. They were in a red zone. And let's just take a look at this one. They were at 1.0 is their reward scale, and they did 10. So maybe it's not, but... 10.16 in a day and 386 HNT in a month. So that's a good month. It's over $3,000. So yeah, that's another one. So helium, hip17.helium.wtf. And you can go on there and see. The other place you can go is Google Earth Pro. You can check out the elevations. And that's basically all of the websites. So you have SiteBot. Ideal distance between miners. So there's no ideal distance, but you want to just have as many miners as possible for you to be connected to. So if I'm 500, 500 meters away from someone, but there's a massive tower in between us and we can't connect, that's not good. But if, um, like for example, in Calgary, my brother's place is connecting to some that are five kilometers away. So now the next thing we're going to do is say, well, how can we get it 10 kilometers away? Because they say that the, this miner can reach 10 kilometers. Why aren't we reaching 10 kilometers? Is it because the antenna is not strong enough? Is it because it's not high enough? Is it pointed in the wrong place? Is there a screen in front of the window? So you want to look at all those things. But there is a penalty for minimum distance. So the minimum distance has to be 300 meters if it's 